Welcome everyone to my session Kubernetes and Checkpoint Restore. My name is Adrian Reber. I work for Red Hat since 2015 and I'm involved in process migration, which is the basis or which is the result of Checkpoint Restore, Restore for at least 10, 11 years now. Um, I'm involved in, in Creo in some way since 2012. Creo is the basis, as the tool we use to checkpoint and restore um, our processes and container here today. And um, I'm focusing on, on container migration around, I would say, 2015. And the agenda for today is I first want to give an introduction about um, a few definitions I'm using, um, then I want to um, show a few use cases why Checkpoint Restore and um, container migration might be, might be something, something useful. And then I want to give some details about um, basically how, how Creo enables us to checkpoint and restore processes and containers. So first, the definition of container life migration, because the work to get um, checkpoint restore working with container is always also uh, the possibility to migrate containers from one system to another one. And, 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 and basically, the idea behind container life migration is transfer a running container from one system to another system. You could also call it maybe stateful migration because the state of the application in the container is not lost, um, but continues to be there. And a very, on a, from a very high level view, um, container migration is basically, we serialize the container on the source system, write it to disk um, and transfer the, 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 the image we, we written to disk to, to a destination system. And on the destination system, we restore from the image, the process, the container. And so we have um, container migration. Um, as mentioned, this is all, all everything I'm talking about today is based on, on Creo, checkpoint in restore in user space. The reason for the name is at the time Creo was first developed, there were different approaches to checkpointing and restoring in, in Linux. There were kernel only approaches, there were mixed kernel and user space approaches, there were approaches where you intercepted system calls and, and Creo um, took another approach and completely did it from user space using existing interfaces to collect as many information about a running process as possible. There are multiple integrations of Creo in container engines, um, container runtimes, and um, we'll want to present some of those here. So the one I have to present first is, is the OpenVZ integration because um, they invented Creo. Um, they had uh, some mechanism to migrate containers before Creo, um, but um, it, I, I think they were not able to, to upstream it to the Linux kernel. So they worked on something which can be upstreamed and which everyone can use. And so they invented Creo and they are now using it to migrate containers um, using Creo. So, and then there's Borg, uh, Google's container engine. It also uses um, Creo to migrate container, especially for long running jobs, which take a couple of hours if one of the um, container nodes is out of resources or is soon going to be out of resources, then um, Borg can move the container from one system to another without stopping it and without losing a couple hours of work, which might have already went into the currently running job. There's an integration of Creo in LexD. Lex so LexD can migrate containers from one host to another host using, using Creo. This also exists for some time already. Then there's an integration in Docker. There's a checkpoint and a restore command, which you can use to checkpoint a container, then transfer it to another system and restore it. And the same exists for Podman. Um, and that's what I've been working on the last um, three, four years now to integrate Creo in, into Podman. And the work I have done for Podman, I have also um, brought to, to Cryo. Um, and I'm, I'm working on this now for about, for about a year. But the problem is 
I can it, the pull request cannot be merged in cryo because it depends on changes to the CRI API, and this requires changes to Kubernetes. So it's 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 a difficult um, situation because you cannot implement um, one without the other, and so you have to start at some point and then you can implement the other thing, but the one thing doesn't work so it's so it's complicated and we are discussing this um, how to best um, integrate it into kubernetes interestingly enough there's a um, issue often issue about um, migration open in, in kubernetes since 2015 there's also a lot of discussion going on there but until now nothing has been merged into kubernetes to implement migration or to at least get um, a step closer to, to implementing um, migration in Kubernetes. So now about um, a couple of use cases. The first use case is reboot and safe state. I try to visualize it here. So we have a container running on a host and the host is memory is blue and the container memory is red. So to, to see the differences here. So um, we, uh, we want to reboot a host because we have to upgrade the kernel, but we do not want to lose the state of the container because it takes forever to start. So what do we do with checkpoint and restore? We checkpoint a container, write it to the local disk, then we reboot a host, so the original host with its memory is gone. And then once the container, uh, once the host has rebooted into new new kernel, that's why I have a, we have a different color, but we have the same container running as before. It's still red as before. I have prepared a demo to show this here. So let's um, connect to a rel A system using Podman. So let me start a container. Podman run. Um, so this is a Wildfly-based container. It's a Java application server, and it has a real simple stateful application in there, uh, which returns just a number. Uh, and once the number has been returned, it increases it. So the next time I get a number increased by one. So it's stateful, and now I can talk to the uh, container and ask for the value. So it gives me a zero, one, and two. Now I say I want to create a checkpoint of the container, so I say Podman container checkpoint checkpoint the last container and export it to the file. So now um, Podman will write the checkpoint file um, to the disk, and then I can reboot the host, and later um, um, I can restore the container from that uh, checkpoint file. The checkpoint file does not only include the, the checkpoint of the processes in the container, but it also includes um, changes to the file system because when the wildfly starts, it creates log files and a lot of files um, to, 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 to manage it thing, its things. So um, all these changes to the file system are also part of the, of the checkpoint archive. So now let's reconnect to the VM. Let's see, there's no container running. So let's restore the container, podman container restore. And I say import and I give it the tar file from before. And now if we connect to the container, it should give us back a three instead of the zero as it would when starting from scratch. So let's talk to the container. And then we get a three and a four. So we did a reboot and we were able to save the state of the container. I'm back to the slides and next use case is what I call a quick startup. So again, we have a container of a host and a container again takes a long time to initialize. <clears throat> and now we want to start up the container faster. So we take a container, uh, a copy of the container. So we take, have the container, we take a checkpoint of it, but we leave the original container running and then we can create multiple copies of the container um, on the host. So let's go back to our demo system. So let's say um, I create another checkpoint. I say portman container check checkpoint last container and now I say um, keep it running. Don't stop the container after the checkpointing and I again export it to the file. I'm overwriting the existing file um, so we don't need this anymore. So um, now again, the same thing, it will create a checkpoint and the file system differences or everything will put into an archive and now I can restore it. Let's see, so the original container is still running, I can still talk to it. 
And now I can restore a copy from the container. So when I say Podman container, restore import again the file. This will now fail because Podman sees that the ID and the name is already in use. And so it tells me I cannot restore this because this already exists. So I tell Podman then use a different name for it. So let's say I counter one. Now it will restore the container. A copy of the container as counter one and another co copy as um, counter two. And then we should be able to talk all containers independently. So now I can say podman inspect counter one to get the IP address of this one. So it says again, six, seven, this is the point where I checkpointed it from. And now I can also say inspect counter two and again, six, seven, eight. So we create multiple copies um, of an existing container. And in this um, small demo case, I can see already um, improvements in the startup time because usually my Wildfly container takes like eight, eight seconds until it can answer the first request. And it takes about four seconds to restore from, from a checkpoint. So I already, already have like 50% um, improvement in startup time restarting from um, from a checkpoint. So the next um, use case is container live migration. This is basically a combination of the two uh, things I've shown before. So again, I have a container running on a source system. I take a copy of the container and write it to disk, and then I transfer it to a destination system, and there I can create multiple copies um, if I want to. So let's go to... So I already have the checkpoint. Uh, okay, now I already have the checkpoint. <coughs> So let's transfer it to another system and say temp dump tar and transfer it to another VM. Uh, uh, where is it here? And so now it's container migrate. We're middle middle in the container migration, and now I'm on the other host, and there's no container hopefully running here. Now I say podman container restore import again from the file I just transfer to the host <clears throat> and it's restoring the container and now I should be able to talk to it and I should get probably again a six right six seven eight so um, now we have um, migrated the container from one host um, to, to another host using Podman's um, feature to export um, checkpoints. So um, I have uh, one more use case here. This is the forensic container checkpointing. And this is also the, the use case we are currently working on our um, um, Kubernetes enhancement proposal and then the corresponding pull request to it. So the idea is we want to introduce checkpoint restore into Kubernetes, but it's complicated, as I said, with the CRI API. So we try to um, implement a really simple use case of checkpoint restore, which um, requires minimal changes to, to Kubernetes. Uh, most of the changes need to happen in the container engine. So uh, what we want to do is we want to checkpoint a container which we think something is not right with the container, something seems to be strange, but we do not want to um, analyze the container in case there is an attacker there and, and in case the attacker has put something in the container to detect analysis of the container. So what we um, do is we take a checkpoint of the container out of Kubernetes and um, try and then we can transfer the container in, in a sandbox environment where we can start it without Kubernetes but without um, influencing the original container. So I also have a demo for this here. So this is now a Fedora system, no longer the, the system from before. I have prepared it here in, in a screen. So there's uh, Kubernetes running with uh, cryo in combination. So let's see, cry control ps. I know this is find a. Okay, there's no container running. Oh, this is just the 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 the, 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 um, the DNS uh, from Kubernetes. Anyway, so let's start a pod with two containers. 
So the part with two containers created, we can see, so the first container is already starting up, this is the same container as before. Again, the wildfly based container, and there's now a second container, it's called counter. It's, it does the same, but it's just a Python application. This time we want to checkpoint um, the, the Python application. So, so let's see, um, we first let's talk to the container so that we see what it returns to us. It returns one, zero, Two. So it's, it's it's the same as before, just implemented in Python. And now we want to check on the container without stopping it. So um, we created a, a kubelet um, interface, which let, lets us checkpoint our container. So it's called checkpoint. Then we say default namespace, um, pod name is counters, and container name is counter. So we now say, let's checkpoint it. Now um, Kubernetes talk to Cryo, Cryo talk to RunC, RunC talk to Scryo, and the container has been checkpointed. If we access the container again, we see it's still running. So the container has not been uh, changed. So now let's stop Kubernetes here on, on this host. And I will now, uh, I'm on my Windows here, and now I will remove the con all the containers from, from this host. Okay, no more containers running here. Now let's create a new pod in cryo directly. And in this pod, we can then restore the container. So I say uh, cryo control create, create a pod. And if I say cryo control pod, pods now, I see there's one pod running. So now let's, uh, okay. Now let's uh, restore the container. I control restore and the checkpoint has been written to disk here. Um, and I'm telling Cryo to restore it in, in the pod I just created. So now the container has been has been restored and now I can access it again under a new ID. And it continues to run here. I can see cry control ps. I see the containers running under this, but um, there's no more Kubernetes running now. Uh, Kubernetes has, has been stopped. So this is now running. So I took a container out of Kubernetes and it kept on running in Kubernetes. And then I started another cryo, or I didn't, but I used the same cryo, but the idea is to take it to another version of cryo and restore the container in another pod um, on another system in a sandbox environment, for example. And um, this way uh, we can um, analyze the container um, without um, changing the original container. So now I want to talk uh, quickly a bit um, about how CRIU works and how it enables us to checkpoint and restore processes and migrate them in this way. So um, the first step is always, of course, checkpointing. <coughs> and so what 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 Creo does is it uses ptrace to 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 pause all processes. Creo always operates on on a, on a process tree. So we point Creo to a process, and Creo will checkpoint this process and all child processes. It will collect all the information of the processes and write it to disk, uh, the process will be paused during that time and can continue to run after the, the checkpointing. The first thing Creo does and where it got, it got its name from is it collects the information from user space um, uh, using the information available in, in ProcPit. So it goes through um, the information there. In, in the initial idea was that Creo uses as many existing interfaces as, as possible. Um, over the time, Creo added additional interfaces to the to the Linux kernel, um, but those interfaces are, are never checkpoint restore only. They can be used for for different things, and so um, there's not really any specific checkpoint restore change in the Linux kernel today. So um, Creo collects all the information from ProPit. Once it has all the information it can collect from the outside of the process, it goes into the process to collect information from within the process's address namespace. And to do this, Creo uses something called a parasite code. The parasite code is injected into the process. It replaces 
some of the original code and the parasite code is then starting again and uh, it's 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 basically um running a daemon inside of the process and now the main creo binary can talk to the daemon running inside of the process as as the parasite code and collect information from within the name from within the address space of the process so uh, we can see inside of the process using this and and one important thing creo does using the parasite code is for example to dump all the memory um, from the processes using from within the processes address namespace and and this way we can dump the memory really fast and if you look at migration times um, the, the most time is spent in, in transferring the data over the network from one host to another host. So dumping the memory from the process to disk is fast, also reading it back is fast um, compared to the time it takes to transfer the process from one system to another over the network. So once the, the parasite code um, has collected all the information and, and written to disk. Um, the parasite code is removed after usage. This is called, or Creo calls this curing the process. The process will never know that it was running under the control of, of, of Creo or the parasite code. It will just continue to run. I try to visualize the parasite um, code a bit here. So we have the original process code to be checkpointed, then remove one part of the code and save it outside of the process. Then we replace um, that part of the code with the parasite code. The parasite code starts, is running in the process. We collect all the information from within the process's address namespace. And once we have collected all the information we need, we replace the parasite code with the original code and the checkpointing is then finished. And at this point, um, after all relevant information has been written to disk and the target process can be killed or it can continue to run. In the demos I've showed we, we have seen both ways, um, either the process keeps on running or not. So this really depends on the use case what you want to do. So after checkpointing the second last step is now restoring the process. This happens by reading all the checkpoint images from disk. Um, and then we recreate the process tree for each PID, TID, just as it was before. Checkpointing, we do a clone for each or clone three, depending on your kernels for each process and recreate the process tree just as it was before checkpointing. And once we have the process tree, the Creo morphs all the processes um, into the original processes. Um, like they were during checkpointing. And one good example, um, I think, is always the file descriptors. So during checkpointing, we look at the file descriptors, which file descriptor points to which file and what position in the, um, um, in the file do we have. And we uh, write this information to disk. And during restore, we re open all opened file with the same file descriptor. And then we position the file descriptor at the correct position. And once the process continues to running after Creo has done all its work, the file descriptor will be at exactly the same position and, and, and will be the same ID, will be the same file just as, as it was before. So the code which will access the file descriptor will just get the same file, the same content, same position. Um, Creo will map all the memory pages back to the original location. It will load all the security settings like AppArmor, SLinux or SecComp. We do the security settings as late as possible um, to, not, um, to make restoring easier because if we load it early, it might block something we do here. Then Creo jumps into the restored process and, and the process continues to run from the point it was checkpointed. And with this, I'm, I'm, I'm at the end of my, my Creo part. The next few slides are just details um, what I did in my demos, just if, if, if you want to um, um, try it out for yourself. Um, the steps are listed here in the slides. So first was the checkpointing, then the restoring and restoring with a new name and uh, creating copies. And with this, I'm already at the, the summary of my talk. So Creo can be used to checkpoint and restore containers. 
Um, it's integrated in different container engines already. It's, it's used in production um, and the use cases I presented where you can reboot into a new kernel without losing the container state. You can create multiple copies of your container for, for fast startup um, if you have a container which is slow starting up or if you want to react quickly on requests. Um, you can migrate running containers from one host to another host using Checkpoint Restore and CRIU. And the thing we are working on currently for, um, for Kubernetes is the Kubernetes Enhancement Proposal 2008, is the forensic container checkpointing uh, with which we hope to enable first steps uh, of checkpointing containers um, in, in Kubernetes. Um, with this, I'm at the end of my talk. Um, thank you for your um, time and, and uh, happy to answer any questions um, you might have.